Hi guys, it's Geekonomics here. In the last week or so, I have been working through the whole notion of Phillips curves, both long run and short run, with regard to the A2, or sorry, should I say, year two macroeconomics course. And I have managed to tally this up, to marry this up, with Mervyn's King's book, The End of Alchemy. Now, if you do not have a copy of this, those of you who are studying uh, A-level economics, may I first of all recommend that you do purchase a copy of it. Because there is so much good stuff in here that will assist and supplement your studies of A-level and really give you that competitive edge over your colleagues nationally who are entered for the exam series. So, um, I would recommend that you get it. And indeed, I think actually in paperback it's very very cheap now on Amazon and also I think actually if you maybe just google it there is a PDF file available for download so I do you know I really recommend it but we've been looking of course at the whole notion of inflation be that demand pull cost push and in particular we've been looking recently at Friedman's uh, hypothesis that inflation is always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon and the fact that this tallies in with the quantity theory of money, if a government or a central bank tries to manoeuvre the economy from its classical natural rate of unemployment, tries to move back towards the zero line, so we're reducing unemployment, I'll just set this down, reducing unemployment, and I have done other videos on this ladies and gentlemen, so do look them up. I'll try and put the links down below if I get a chance. But any attempt by the government to reduce the level of unemployment simply leads to, in the short run, a reduction in unemployment. But in the long run, what happens is that the economy reverts back to its natural rate of unemployment, but the price level is rising all the time. So here we're up to PB and then here we're up to PD. So if we were at C, land here, government tries to do the same thing again, all that happens is that we get inflation. Now I've got explanations of that on previous videos, so I'll not go into that too much. But you'll know that these points, A, C and E, these are referred to as the NIRU, the Non-Accelerating Inflation Rate of Unemployment. Now contrast the NIRU with what Mervyn King referred to in his book as the Nice Decade. Now the nice decade, let me just get this right, is the non-inflationary period of continuous expansion. And Mervyn King was really referring to the early 2000s in that respect, when we had growth, but we didn't have any inflationary pressures. Now that's a good counter-argument, ladies and gentlemen, to this whole notion of uh, being able to grow your economy, but actually you've got to accept some inflation as a consequence. But I just say that as a, as a by the by really. Now of course you can use this diagram because this is also the classical aggregate supply curve as opposed to the long run Phillips curve and short run Phillips curve. You can use this diagram to illustrate exactly the same thing. So this time you're boosting employment and lowering unemployment by moving from A to B and you're moving up the short run that should be AS curve, short run aggregate supply curve. However, at B, your workers, they recognise that prices have gone up, they ask for a wage increase, as a consequence of that, short run cost curves of a firm increase and you move from point B back up to point C. And so the effect is the same. So you started here at PA and now you're ending up at this higher price level of PC. Now what I want to do, ladies and gentlemen, is I just want to read you the little excerpt from Mervyn King's book, which I think is an excellent exposition, an explanation of what is going on in this diagram, in these diagrams. So ladies and gentlemen, if you have a copy of the book, it's page 303, as follows. Central to the resolution of this puzzle was the idea of rational expectations. That is, expectations consistent with the underlying reality. 
Rational expectations are an economist version of, and I love this quote, ladies and gentlemen, you can fool all the people some of the time, and some of the people all of the time. But you cannot fool all the people all the time. And the idea helped to explain why allowing inflation to rise did not lead to a permanently lower unemployment rate. And here we go. Imagine an economy where unemployment is at its natural rate. So you can see Mervyn King, he's, he's referring deliberately, specifically, ladies and gentlemen, to your A-level economics here. The, the labour market is in balance and inflation is constant. If the government boosts spending to bring unemployment below its natural rate, so boost spending, stimulate growth, bring unemployment from A to B, in other words, so bring unemployment below its natural rate, then the increased demand for labour will push wages up. But to restore firms' profits, prices will also rise and real wages fall back to their original level. If people expect that the government will keep trying to push unemployment down, then wages and prices will chase each other up in an escalating spiral. In the end, unemployment will return to its natural rate and accelerating inflation will have achieved nothing by way of a permanent reduction in unemployment. This was the fate of the British government after the experience of rising inflation and unemployment in the 1960s and 70s. Now, this whole notion of this sort of escalating spiral is a really interesting one because it obviously relates to our Nairu points. Because once people expect the government to intervene to attempt to reduce unemployment, adjustment mechanisms mean that we automatically go from A to C and then C to E. We don't even get this short-term trade-off. It's just up, 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 and away. So ladies and gentlemen, I leave that with you and I recommend that you purchase a copy of Mervyn King's book. I'm not on commission or anything like that, but I think it's a really good supplement to your studies. I have a, a handout which identifies all the key page references in that book and how they would relate to your A-level economics. So if you'd like a copy of that, then by all means do get in touch. Bye for now.